So good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining this session. My name is Elisabetta Senova. I am coming from Bulgaria, and uh, we have very packed agenda. So just so uh, some simple housekeeping rules. And uh, there will be four presentations in total. Twenty minutes for each presentation. 15 minutes for exposition, and then five minutes for questions and answers. Uh, I will give you a sign when. There will be five minutes left and two minutes left. And without any further ado, I would like to introduce the first speaker today, who is Artur Celian from Brazil. Um, he will talk about how can we define and characterize entrepreneurship, and he is coming from Universitet Rey Juan Carlos. So, Artur, please. Firstly, I would like to quote that it's a huge pleasure to be here presenting my paper. My work is part of my PhD thesis and is entitled, How Can We Define and Characterize Entrepreneurship? To understand better the subject, I must show you the current research about it. And in this sense, entrepreneurship has different approaches, even in the Austrian school. And among the Austrian approaches, we can find the Kirchnerian alertness, the judgmental approach, and the production organization perspective. More than that, the present uh, research is focused on the study of the creation of new ventures as the manifestation of, of entrepreneurship. But we must comprehend that uh, the relevance of another kind of creation that happens inside organizations called intrapreneurship. And so, the present work attempts to analyze if a conciliation among alertness, judgment, and production organization approaches is the best way to define the nature of the entrepreneurial action using a theoretical methodology. And what is entrepreneurship? This concept has different uses. One more strict that indicates entrepreneurship as directly linked with the creation of new businesses and you are more general, including not only the creation of new businesses, but also innovative activities related to products or processes. The general use seems more favorable, since entrepreneurship of men goes beyond the mere business-related activity, as uh, quoted by Huerta de Soto, in a broader sense, every human action is entrepreneurial. And uh, for the development of an entrepreneurial environment, collaborators must be encouraged and motivated to make innovative decisions, finding support for their actions. With no support, resources, and enough time to create, they are constrained due to the lack of resources. Without an organ organizational arrangement that allows them to be creative and innovative, it's impossible to create and innovate. Now that I presented the entrepreneurial definition, I will talk about the three different Austrian approaches already quoted, starting from the Kirchnerian alertness. Kirchner conceptualized alertness as an abstract type of knowledge. Uh, sorry, Kirchner conceptualized alertness and as an abstract type of knowledge to which we should credit the discovery and exploitation of opportunities. The exercise of alertness requires an ability and skill to perceive opportunities and the freedom to pursue them, being possible to exercise entrepreneurship without capital ownership. Furthermore, Kirchner has emphasized the exercise of alertness and the entrepreneur's activity as coordinating activities. Although very innovative for, it, for, his time, for its time, the Kirchnerian approach was not left in intact, particular, particularly concerning the role of the entrepreneur on it. For Hofbar, for example, the Kirchnerian entrepreneur is nothing but an ideal type that does not venture, but only perceive new opportunities. 
And uh, Kisner later clarified the misunderstandings about his concepts. The key purpose he means for the discovery concept was linked to creativity, that is, discover ex novo opportunities, and for that matter, discovery gains the meaning of creation. In the judgmental approach, the future death defines man's entrepreneurial action is the exercise of judgmental decisions under uncertainty. Influenced, influenced by Hofbart's and Salerno's criticisms of Kirchner, the judgmental approach emphasizes capital ownership and ultimate decision, uh, and the ultimate decision on the use of resources, providing a direct connection between this and man's entrepreneurial action. There is something to be considered. The fact that entrepreneurs take a responsibility for the ultimate judgmental decisions on investments do not, does not mean that they are the only ones responsible for them. Foss, Foss, and Clyde separate these two types of judgment. The one made by entrepreneurs, called original judgment, and the, the other made by employees, called derived judgment. And there's a third mention approach uh, in the Austrian school, the perspective of entrepreneurship as the productive production organization. To comprehend the production organization, it's necessary to know that the, it, it's necessary to understand the heterogeneous nature of capital. Capital goods are heterogeneous not only by their physical features, but, all, but also by their roles in different production plants. The Austrians, led by Mises, have already focused the arguments on the idea that one of the central roles of the entrepreneur is choosing between different arrangements of factors in the production of goods. Hofbard states that an entrepreneur who generates profit is the one who allocates resource, hence organizes the production, where those were undervalued according to desire of the customers. Each of these three approaches presented tries to, tries to define entrepreneurship and how it develops. Each approach has its uh, advantages and disadvantages in explaining entrepreneurship. Without alertness, it's impossible to explain the entrepreneurship of man and its judgment under uncertainty. In other words, man would not have an, a reason to judge anything if he was not per per perceptive to enjoy, discover, and or create new opportunities. Likewise, being alert is not enough. After discovering, imagining, projecting, and creating scenarios, he must make effective decisions uh, on market processes. In addition, without organizing the production related to exercise of the elaborated alertness and judgment, entrepreneurial action is not sufficient. The seizing of opportunities does not occur in an automatic way, like in an economic model. It requires action and command. Men can even try to execute each one of these, these actions isolated, but his actions will be in incomplete. So, entrepreneurship, my work, results for a from a conciliation between alertness, judgment, and production organization. Man perceives and creates market opportunities, decides to allocate resources, and elaborates a, st a strategy to achieve his goals. And in the entrepreneurial action, it's not different, even though it doesn't refer to the creation of business itself. As the team leader and responsible for facing uncertainty, the entrepreneur is also responsible for organizing the production or inside the analysis processes and creating in entrepreneurial opportunities. He has the vital role of allocating resources and people to achieve the proposed objectives. And about the production organization, we must quote that for, stop being a, uh, for something to stop being a dream, it's necessary to coordinate multiple efforts even if you are talking about uh, innovation inside the companies. 
Uh, it's not a, only about the financial cost and capital ownership, but also the entrepreneurial ability, skill to organ organize productive and organizational arrangements that allows that allow for its implementation. Good ideas are useless if not put into practice. Therefore, this entrepreneur, as the inventor and achiever of new opportunities, exercise these three attributes. One, by being alert to new opportunities. He speculates, creates, or discovers using the freedom he received from senior management. Two, he uses his derived judgment liberated by the owner of the resources. And three, as he's responsible for the innovation, he takes control of the innovative processes, organizing the entrepreneurial team. More than that, entrepreneurship is never developed in a sole and single action, but that as a dynamic process that, that never runs out. The entrepreneurial process begin, begins from the consequent reactions to the actions of the entrepreneur. Repeating itself, steaming from his alertness to imagine and discover new opportunities, subsequently executing his judgment and organizing the production. In the end, entrepreneurship is not, as one can imagine, just a battle. It's a war that is a range of battles that require strategies, ta tactics, and distinct operational functions to achieve a common goal. Uh, thank you very much. It's, it's, it's that. Okay, but I'm finished. Okay, so open the floor for questions and answers from Arthur. Okay. Great. So, so I work within a, within a firm, so you know, if I do something... So, so I, I work within a, f a large firm, okay. and if, if I have a, an idea, I'm, a, I'm alert to an opportunity, I identify that opportunity, and, and I think that your, your definition of the entrepreneur is very stylized because that person then drives the whole activity within the, within the firm. But often, if I have an idea, I have to decide myself whether the firm, is this firm I'm in, is the right firm to do it with. If I have a really good idea, but the firm might not be the right, right, right organization to do it with, I, I then decide, do I leave the firm and become an entrepreneur in the Foss and Klein sense of it or the Kurtzner sense of it, or do I stay within the firm? But if I decide that the opportunity is one that the firm could exploit, oftentimes I don't behave like, a, like, like an entrepreneur um, internally. I, I take my idea to my boss and I, I explain it to him, and then the idea might be taken away from me and somebody else will do it. It's my alertness to the opportunity, and I've brought it to somebody else, and then the firm gears itself into action and the firm exploits the opportunity. So if you think of the classic example of the development of the post-it notes within 3M, the guy who developed the post-it note, you know, the, the glue that allowed okay, you to yeah. tack it on and off, he had no further part in the process once he developed the idea. 3M itself takes over the idea and exploits it. It develops the production, it does it. And I, so I think that your, 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 your stylized version of the entrepreneur, entrepreneur is very interesting, I think, you know, as, as, a, as a model. Yeah. But I think that the, 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 the decisions the entrepreneur makes are often more complex and difficult than an entrepreneur because the entrepreneur has to decide not only has he, has he alerts to an idea, but how is it going to be exploited? Is a, is a, is, has, he's a range, he or she has a range of options there a range of complex decisions that an entrepreneur outside of the firm ha doesn't have. So, so I, do, I do think it, it, it throws up different types of problems. And it, there is a distinction between the two. But things like the culture of the firm, will the firm exploit the opportunity, are also important factors for the entrepreneur that aren't for the entrepreneur yet. OK, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, there, there is some difference uh, bet between uh, Entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship, uh, because entrepreneurs uh, risks their capital. So, like they have the original judgment, and I think uh, Foss, Foss and Klein, uh, in Foss, Foss and Klein, we can find it uh, this difference, differentiation. And um, about the risk, it's interesting your example uh, because, of course, entrepreneurs uh, can. Have, can has his uh, ideas stowed by companies. 
and uh, it's but companies will be uh, restricted to creation of new ide new ideas. So uh, we're talking about a company that uh, have an tech, uh, how I can say, uh, a creative environment that uh, allows people to create more and more ideas. If a company starts to uh, steal or execute without permission and without, uh, uh, um, I don't know the word right now, uh, start, uh, without um, um, pre premium, to say when you give someone something a for reward. a reward, yeah. Rewarding employees for, its, for their ideas this company we, we will start to uh, we start to be uh, not have more ideas it's something but uh, okay yeah it's a model my my paper it's a start no it's it's try define entrepreneurship uh, later in the next chapters of my work i will uh, work on more uh, complex examples and about uh, organizational culture that's uh, so relevant without a good organizational culture that uh, allows people to create it's impossible to have uh, entrepreneurship but of course uh, talking about the difference between entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship entrepreneurship is more complex it's more complex because Co you are starting a business uh, from zero for for nothing from from nothing you don't have the uh, environment they created already created environment that supports your creation so you risk is more and you take more time to be to have like the execution of your ideas to be rewarded by your ideas so i don't know it's interesting i will talk with you more later because i really like your example thank you very much for your question uh, hmm. Yeah, as I have a short uh, personal example. I'm an entrepreneur, and we have. I want to give the owner perspective. It's it's really difficult also to keep entrepreneur, entrepreneurs. They create a lot of value, and they have to keep them in the company to 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 get some part of that value. And we have a web hosting company, and we had a smart pe smart guy. He invented a new business model. So we have to to give him have him to stay in the company. We gave him a third of the company shares. And now 10 years later, he is the main owner of it. And we have all prospered due to this process. He have transferred the company into something much better and more prosperous. And all of us have been gaining of this entrepreneurship. So, so it's, uh, as an owner, it's always how to keep those people. And you have to pay them in some way. Yeah. That's my perspective yeah. as a business you, owner. You need a an, an culture and an uh, environment and arrangement, but of course, in the money is the money is the God. I can, I don't know if I can say it, but <laughs> without money, people, the, the people will not stay in the company, would not stay in the company. So you need to pay then and rewarding with shares. It's an unkind, a kind of, um, uh, strategy. I don't know, in Brazil, for example, uh, one of the uh, most famous companies uh, started in the 90s a different kind of, in Brazil it's not common to, it, it was not common to like reward of shares companies. It was always, uh, uh, most of the companies were like family-based companies, family-owned companies. So this uh, company that was, well, beer company started uh, Rewarding of shares people and like they uh, started to sustain their their environment and keep their uh, most brilliant people to work there. Like it's it's an a kind of a kind of strategy that can work, uh, but it needs to be used in a, a certain way. Uh, because sometimes rewarding of shares, we can make uh, like a distortion about market value. And uh, people start to try to create short-term value in, uh, in the stock's prices to, be, to maximize their, their, uh, their net worth. 
and not like uh, to maximize the value addition to economic or for the stakeholders of the organization. Okay, thank you very much, Artur, for the thought-provoking uh, presentation.